Hi, my friend. Matt Finch here, introducing the extraordinary flagship program created by Chris Scott, the founder of Fit Recovery. This is a one-of-a-kind online program for dominating alcohol through biochemical optimization, mindset, and more. Why continue to test out trial and error when you could follow a powerful and proven 100% customizable system? Get instant access to over 20 hours of step-by-step -step video instruction, the ability to ask your questions of Chris Scott and his head coach, Matt Finch, that's me, and the rest of the life-changing and transformation-catalyzing features and benefits included in the program. To learn more, read or watch testimonials, and get started, visit fitrecovery.com forward slash course. And to save an additional $25, use coupon code 444 at fitrecovery.com forward slash course. Thanks for tuning in to the Elevation Recovery Podcast, your hub for addiction recovery strategies, hosted by Chris Scott and Matt Finch. Welcome to the Elevation Recovery Podcast. My name's Matt Finch, your host for this episode. As the guest for today, my dad, John Finch, master herbalist and nutrition teacher, uh, shaman, and much more. Right now, I'm going to take a chug of this something pecking royal jelly oral liquid. Hold on real quick. Peking. Mm. I'm going to wash it down with some Kayani Sunrise super fruit, super antioxidant, super food uh, drink. And now for today's episode, my dad's going to be talking about basic nutrition kind of fundamentals, the macronutrients, micronutrients, what nutrition is, the standard American diet and seasonal affective disorder. Right now, people are starting to get depressed, low energy, as we have the declining kind of sunlight going into less and less daylight throughout the day and of course the sad American standard American diet can uh, exacerbate that make it much worse so we're going to be talking about number one what is nutrition and mostly what are the different macronutrients how do those differ from the categories of micronutrients what is micronutrient density what is the typical American diet lacking in and excessive in so this can be uh, for you a nuts and bolts fundamentals just on the kind of core basics of nutrition building calories um, and building a micronutrient protocol for yourself so thanks so much dad well thanks for having me and uh, so <clears throat> when did you start teaching nutrition was it at one of the massage colleges or I know it's been probably decades since you've been teaching it's been about 40 years and so you've gone over this topic a whole bunch and you're really good at explaining because it's otherwise it can be really technical, but explaining to people kind of the basics of, you know, what's a carbohydrate, for example, what's a fat, what is fiber? So why don't we start off by just explaining that? What are, what is a macronutrient? What are the types? Why are those important, et cetera? Okay. Well, macronutrients, macro means large. So these are things we need large amounts of. <laughs> And they include what we call the energy yielding nutrients, fats, proteins, and carbs, carbohydrates. So the standard American diet is really poor for these things. But if you know how to do it, you can get the nutrition you need from these three food groups. Your, your protein, we need about 50 grams of protein a day. And of course, it depends on your activity level. So it's it's all based on the calorie burn per day. So if I played basketball today, and so for a day where I'm active like that for a couple of hours, I need about 2,800 calories. For a sedentary day, I need about 1,800. Um, but this they base most nutritional um, analysis on 2,000 calories a day. So Basically, it breaks down to, ideally, 10% of those calories from fat. What is a fat? Fat is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just three elements. And there's different kinds of fat. There's saturated fat, and there's unsaturated fat. Saturated fat actually comes in a couple of categories, too. 
the long chain saturated fat, which we get from animal foods, are the bad ones because we tend to have those build up on the inside of our um, veins and capillaries, arteries, causing hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis, arterial sclerosis. Um, and the unsaturated fats are the liquid fats. You can tell a saturated fat because it's solid at room temperature. A, a unsaturated fat is a, uh, a, a unsaturated fat is liquid at room temperature. Saturated fat is a solid, like a stick of butter is an example of a saturated fat. Olive oil is an example of an unsaturated fat. And of My course, two favorite fats. There, uh, there you go. Um, and of course, we could spend all day getting into um, in, into the fats, but I'll try and keep it simple. Uh, basically, uh, your saturated fat the, comes in two categories, long chain and short chain. Your long chain saturated fats, which come from animal foods, are the ones that will kill you, uh, cause high blood pressure, heart disease, uh, strokes coronary artery disease, and your um, short-chain short saturated fats, which come from like avocados. Avocados mm -hmm. have saturated fat in them, uh, but it is what we call a short-chain saturated fat. And basically the body just burns those for calories and they don't present a, a problem. So you, you need to get about 10% of your calories from, from fat. So if that was uh, a 2,000 calorie diet, uh, that's going to be about 10% um, of 2,000 is 200 calories. Fats have uh, four calories per gram. So that's going to end up being about 22 grams. Four calories per gram? Four. Uh, Fats? Nine, nine calories yeah, per yeah, gram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Thanks for, thanks for correcting me. I'm like, whoa, that's some, so, what are the new fats that are out? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're called low, low, low cats. No. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what we don't want is um, those long chain saturated fats. Again, the short chain saturated fats, like we get in avocados, the body just burns for energy and that's not a problem. Um, so, of your 10% of your calories from fats, you only want 10% of those from saturated fats. A and um, so that, that kind of covers fats. Um, proteins. Protein, pro protein, protein, yeah, pro protein. Pe people think proteins are, are king, Some, somehow magical. Yeah. Well, guess what? Proteins are, um, have the, you get the same number of calories from a gram of protein as you do from a, a gram of carbohydrate. So people that like try to lose weight by getting on a, you know, a high protein diet or something or a low, low, low carb diet is, is a joke because you get the same number of calories from each and whatever you don't burn, you wear on your behind or wherever. Um, so we try to keep in bounds there. Um, so your, your proteins, um, your ideal protein source uh, actually is from greens. I, I do plant identification walks and we come across mustard greens. Mustard grows around here, San Diego. And I tell my students, there's three times more protein in mustard greens than there is in roast beef. And they say, what? How can I convince my boyfriend of that? He's a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. I say, take him to the zoo and stand him in front of the gorilla or the orang. What are they eating? They are eating leaves. And guess what? They are classified as great apes. And guess what we are classified as? Great apes. We are a great ape. And we are leaf eaters by design. So when we talk about the, the, the nutrients in a food, we have to equate that with the number of calories we get from that food. It's called nutrient density. So yeah, a, a, a serving of roast beef, which is 
four ounces, a quarter pounder, gives you 25 grams of protein, which is half your protein requirement for the day generally, which is 50 grams. But how much is that going to cost you in calories? 425 calories. I like, to, I like to put that in terms of dollars and cents, which people understand better. Your mm -hmm. allowance is $20. That quarter pounder is going to cost you $4.25, which is what, quite a lot of your allowance on that protein. So it, it, it has 25 grams of protein, but 425 calories. Guess what? 100 of those calories are from the protein. What are the other 325 calories from? saturated fat which will kill you a serving of mustard greens and these are greens in general uh, only gives you four grams of protein boy that's not much but how much is it going to cost you 22 cents mm -hmm. 22 calories so if you do the math grams of protein per calorie or calories per gram it, it actually breaks down to three times more protein per calorie from green leafies than from roast beef. So that's a very poor source of protein. And of course it comes bundled with cholesterol, which no plant in the world has any of. That's all animal products. So your better source of your proteins are beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, and whole grains, besides the green leafies. And if you are gonna eat animals, and a lot of people don't, uh, then you're looking at fish, seafood and eggs well you want to make sure you don't eat too many eggs because an egg has as many um, grams of cholesterol in it as a whole chicken because guess what an egg is a whole chicken it just hasn't been born yet so uh i just, just had eggs right before i came over here well uh, yeah eggs are okay yeah but you just don't want to you know well, i had three of them not two dozen yeah that's right um so um <clears throat> So that brings us to carbohydrates. Carbs. Carbs, yeah. Uh, carbs are made out of exactly the same thing as fat. What? F carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. In fact, you could call a carbohydrate hydrated carbon. Carbon and water. Carbon and H2O. Hmm. That's the three elements in, in, um, in carbs. They're the same as three elements in fat. It's just that the fat molecule is a more complicated molecule, so it stores more energy. So whereas a carb will give you four calories per gram, a fat, as we talked about before, gives you nine calories per gram. And uh, so you, you want about 40% of your calories coming from carbs. But we need to clarify about carbs because what most Americans eat are the carbs are refined carbs. And, and people are saying, oh, carbs are bad, carbs are bad. White yeah, bread. Yeah, the, the carbs that Americans eat are bad, <laughs> right? You know, they're raped grains. Raped, what does that mean? It means refined. You know, refined doesn't mean they're sent to finishing school, you know, walking with a book on their head so they walk nice and straight. It, it means they, in the 1950s, they started removing the, the bran from grains to make it more digestible, supposedly. Well, the bran is what contains the fiber, which is super important for health and nutrition. It also contains your B vitamins. In fact, when they started doing that, uh, people start getting deficiency diseases, berry, berry, and pellagra, deficiencies of uh, B1 and B3. The, Alcohol I, depletes those too. That's correct. And, and so, you know, people start getting health issues. People started dying. We were losing taxpayers. The government went, oh no, we need taxpayers. So they passed some regulations saying that these uh, companies had to add back in some of these nutrients. Fortified. Fortified. Um, we call it... We, Falsified. Yeah. We call it enriched. You, you can look on the label of things, and I recommend people do that. And what you're going to look at on the nutrition label is, is the word uh, enriched. Which means depleted, really. Which means raped. Raped. Yeah. Which, which means, you know, you know, my take on that is you get mugged. You know, a, 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 um, 
a enriched mugging is where the mugger takes all your money and gives you bus fare home. Okay, that's that's your refined grains. Um, but they taste so good, and they give us a drug-like effect. Because all you're tasting is sugar, just the starch inside. Besides that, they remove the germ, uh, which is the life of the grain. That's what's going to become the new plan if you let it do that. But they remove the germ uh, because that has uh, your essential fatty acids in there, which have a very short shelf life, mm -hmm. your EFAs. So if you if you leave those in there, then then that food is going to go rancid pretty quickly. If, if you remove those, then you can Wonder Bread will sit on the shelf for the rest of your life. Because <laughs> um, it's just... It's Wonder Bread because I wonder why it hasn't spoiled so yet. <laughs> that's right. I wonder well, why it's not spoiling. So that's 51% of our calories come fr from refined grains. Not my calories. Yeah, we're talking about the standard American diet. 42% <laughs> of the calories in the standard American diet come from animal foods. Okay. And not typically grass-fed, grass free-range, more like the antibiotic, hormone, steroid pumped, totally cruelly treated and, animal products. And, and fed genetically modified, commercially grown grains. Inflammatory, omega-6, 9 stuff combos. So um, the, the, the problem with your, um, with your meat um, is, is that, yeah, as Matt said, they're they're pumped full of antibiotics, growth hormones, um, and and they're 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 full of saturated fat and cholesterol, and uh, and and not great really. Um, whereas if you get um, wild caught salmon, for example, wild caught salmon, I just have some in the fridge right now. Nice. Um, so uh, so your 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 animal foods in general, are poison, just to put it quite bluntly. You mean McDonald's doesn't have healthy meat in them? <laughs> what McDonald's is, is, is loaded with is fat. A and the reason they put fat in foods is that, this is a 411 here, fats carry flavor to the taste buds. Hmm. So the more fat a food is, ha has in it, it doesn't taste better. It makes you able to taste it better. Mm. So you're not going to eat a stick of butter. Heck no. But are you going to eat your toast without butter on it? No, that's called dry toast. You do, it doesn't taste like anything. You put butter on it, all of a sudden you get the flavor. Mm. Um, and so, so McDonald's that's and all incredible. your fast foods are full of fat because... They taste, you taste them better. And all the snacks Willow likes the most, like goldfish and uh, chocolate chip muffins and stuff like that. Yeah, the problem with those kind of snack foods is there's a kind of fat in there that's really, really, really bad. And it's called trans fat. Now, it was only a few years ago that they started making it uh, illegal to sell this stuff without putting that there's trans fat on the nutritional label. Unfortunately, to get that, that legislation passed, the lobbyists you know, lobbied so heavy for that that to get that passed, they had to make it so that if it had less than a half a gram of trans fat per serving, they could put zero. Wow. And maybe it's got 10 servings in the package. So you got five grams of trans fat. What's wrong with trans fat? It is a it's it's a phony fat. It's an it's an essential fatty acid, which your your body's going to take and and try and plug it into a cell wall. Your cell walls are essential fatty acids, and cell walls aren't like the wall of of your house. They're a living membrane, permeable, semi permeable, and they're they make choices about what to let in and what not to let in. They can let in some things and not others. Uh, and that's, that's, that's if you have healthy EFAs in the cell wall, essential fatty acids. But if it, if it plugs in an essential fatty acid that looks like it's okay, but it's not, it's a trans fat, it's like Frankenstein. Frankenfats. Frankenfats. What was wrong with Frankenstein? He made poor choices. <laughs> he was throwing 
this little girl was throwing flowers in the mill pond there, and he ended up throwing the little girl in, drown her. Well, the villagers didn't care for that much, and they burn him up in the, in the, in the mill. So if you put these trans fats into your cell walls, that's like Franken fats. They make poor decisions, and one of two things happen, neither of which is good. One, it lets in everything. Cell dies. It doesn't let in anything. Cell dies. Well, we can make new cells, but how much of that are you going to keep up with, with all these amount of trans fats in the diet? They're killing people. Um, so we, we, do need some, we do need some fat for sure. Um, and, uh, but uh, what, what is fat used for in the body? Well, as, as I was saying, cell walls, we also get calories, energy from fats. But we need fats also to absorb our fat-soluble vitamins, mm. which are your vitamin K, E, D, and A. We need fats to help absorb those. Um, okay, so those are your pretty much macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs. All right? And, and again, you don't want refined carbs. You want whole grains. And ideally sprouted whole grains. So what's the difference? Well, a grain has a lot of starch in the middle of it. That like an egg has a bunch of that white, which is the, which is the, the protein, which is gonna turn into the, the chicken. Um, and of course the yellow of the egg is the, like the germ of a, a grain. So if you're eating carbs and you're eating grains, you wanna eat whole grains, but even better, is sprouted whole grains. So we buy bread at the health food store and we buy sprouted. So what's the difference? The, the, the grain has a bunch of starch in it that's going to become the plant as, as it sprouts and develops. Once you sprout it, a lot of that, most of that starch in there, which are calories, converts to fiber. And so you get less calories. Oh no, that's good because you're going to get more nutrient per calorie that way. It's going to be a higher nutrient density. And guess what? Fiber is one of the most deficient elements of the, hum of the standard American diet. There, okay. There's something called RDA. That's the old word for it, but we'll use it because that's what people use. It's actually something a little bit different now. But it, it, it's recommended daily allowance. And for example, the RDA for vitamin C is, is 60 milligrams per day. Well, that's not the ideal amount. I took two grams of that today, 2,000 milligrams. And if I, I'm fighting off a cold or a flu or something, I'll, I'll take eight grams a day. But if you, if you get 60 milligrams, then you won't get scurvy. And that's what RDA means. It's the minimum amount of that nutrient required to prevent deficiency disease. So there's also something called DV, daily value. And that means that if you eat the standard American diet, which is SAD, by the way, um, then that's how much you'll get. Well, the, st the DV for vitamin C is 60 milligrams. And of course, it's not that for everybody. But who do you know that has had scurvy? Nobody. <laughs> Because, so as bad as the standard American diet is, it does provide us with enough vitamin C to prevent scurvy. Well, the RDA for fiber is 35 grams a day. Now, considering that 93% of our calories come in packages with zero fiber, that's animal products and refined grains, then the daily value it is um, actually listed as 15. Wow. So if the RDA is 35 and the DV is 15. That's low. And, and I think that's inflated. If 93% of our calories mm -hmm. come from foods with, with no fiber. So then we ask ourselves the question, what is the deficiency disease that we suffer from if we lack that 35 grams of fiber a day? Heart disease? cancer and obesity, diabetes. 
And those are, those are the th main things that are killing people in America. And it's largely because they're not getting enough fiber. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. So that's super important. So those are your macronutrients. 35 grams, that's, that's a macro. It's, that's a lot. So the other end of things is micronutrients. What, it, what does that mean? Micros. That means smaller amounts of things. So your micronutrients are um, your vitamins and minerals. So what do vitamins do? Vitamins are actually assisting enzymes in the body do their job. They're cofactors for enzymatic activity. And your water-soluble vitamins are folate or folic acid, which is B9, and your other B vitamins, uh, vitamin C, and those are your, those are your water-soluble uh, micronutrients. Uh, your fat-soluble uh, vitamins are your A, D, E, and K. These are things that we only need little bits of, small amounts of. So that drink that I had at the beginning of this, the sunrise, that was all the vitamin B, the B vitamins, vitamin C, and that's the, they call it sunrise because it's meant to be drank in the morning and it has all water soluble. Then the evening one sunsets the fat soluble, the vitamin A, the vitamin D. I don't think they put K in it, but and even the omega-3s. Okay, I'll shut up. That's all right. So, yeah, in the morning, <clears throat> the reason we're going to have it in the morning with breakfast, we're breaking our fast. We haven't eaten for probably 12 hours. Um, you maybe ate your dinner at 7 o'clock in the evening. You're going to have your breakfast at 7 in the morning. Half your day you haven't had food. That's a fast. You're going to break that with what? Ideally, fruit. And, and, and fruit's basically got your water-soluble vitamins in it, and it's mostly watery, doesn't have a lot of fat in it. So this is a good time to take your fat, your, your water-soluble vitamins, uh, your, your B vitamins and your vitamin C. Um, and um, in the evening is when we want to take our, our fat-soluble vitamins because we're going to probably have some fish or some uh, poultry or something that ha has more fat in it. Um, so the minerals also break down into macro minerals, micro minerals, and trace minerals. Hmm. Your macro minerals are things like calcium and, and potassium. For example, I take a supplement uh, of, of calcium that's 500 and it's bundled with uh, magnesium actually, which is uh, 250 milligrams, CalMag, because uh, they help absorb each other. Uh, but 500 milligrams, that's a half a gram, that's a lot in the, in the terms of the minerals. Um, so those, that's, those are considered macro minerals, calcium, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, and some others. Your, your micro minerals are things that you need much less of, smaller amounts of. And then you've got your trace minerals. Would chromium, selenium, those be micro minerals? Trace. Trace. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, sorry, keep going. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So um, so Matt asked about the you know the 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 standard American diet in general. Mm -hmm. Well, there's there's something called a dietary quality index. Hmm. And it's basically between one and a hundred. So I if you can imagine uh, those 93% of, of our calories, for example, that come from refined grains and animal foods. If we go back just one step to nutrient density, like we did with figuring out the protein per gram uh, for mustard greens and roast beef, the, the nutrient density of that 93% of the calories in the standard American diet is um, about 15. Jeez. That's not 15 out of 100. That's 15 out of 1,000, okay? What's the gold standard? Yeah, what's the gold standard? Um, kale, bok choy, even cabbage has a nutrient density of 650, <laughs> okay? Lettuce even has, you know, romaine has, a, you know, nutrient density of a couple of hundred. People <laughs> think lettuce doesn't have any nutrient density, you know, no, no, no nu nutritional benefit. What doesn't have a nutritional benefit is a standard American diet. 
15 out of 1,000, a, a that'd be like if you took a test in school <laughs> and you got 1.5 out of 100. <laughs> What would what would they have to give you as a grade? An F minus 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 F, minus minus. Yeah, there's not enough minuses to define it. No. Um, so this thing about the dietary quality index, uh, out of a hundred. DQI. DQI. They've they've established this uh, uh, for the standard American diet, and this is out of a hundred, and I think this is inflated as well. It's eleven. And again, if you got 11 out of 100 on a test, that would most like, you know, 60 is a D. Mm -hmm. Below 60 is an F. How far below 60 is 11? That's crazy. And the real problem with this is that what's also dramatically missing in the standard American diet are enzymes. Okay, what are enzymes? En enzymes are protein, which are the workforce in the body. Whatever gets done in the body gets done by enzymes. They're busy, 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 busy little proteins. And that 93% of our calories coming from refined grains and animal foods, how many enzymes are in there? Well, enzymes are destroyed at 100, 130 degrees completely. They start getting destroyed at 110, but at 130, flat line. So some people say, Oh, I didn't cook my broccoli. I just lightly steamed it. Well, guess what? Steam is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and I ask him, can you take that broccoli out of the pan with your fingers? Out of your steamer with your fingers. That's like, oh, no, that would burn. Yeah, well, there's no enzymes that are active in there. How many enzymes are there going to be in animal food? How much of that do you eat raw? Mostly zero. So there's 93% of your calories that don't even have any enzymes in it. So we are totally enzyme deficient. How does that impact us? The organ that produces our enzymes is the pancreas. Okay, Dr. Edward Howells did the research on enzymes, 40 years of research. He wrote a, a definitive book on it. And basically what, what he did is he got a grant from the government to do this research. And they did autopsies on people that died, obviously. And they compared people that ate mostly raw food with people that ate mostly cooked food. And what they found was that people that ate predominantly cooked food, their pancreas weights were 40% higher than those that ate raw food. So that's not a buff pancreas that's been working out. That's a swollen, exhausted organ trying to do the impossible. Hypertrophied. See, we're, we're designed to get the enzymes. They're called exogenous enzymes. All the live food that we eat has enzymes in it. Every living cell has enzymes in it. But when you kill that cell, so do you kill the enzyme when you cook it. And, and so although we rely on enzymes from the food that we eat, we're not getting enzymes from the food that we eat. And so the pancreas has to work like crazy to make up for that imbalance, that deficit. And the point is it can't. So what happens when you don't get enough enzymes? And, and the pancreas can't keep up with it, although it's killing itself, do it, trying to do that. We borrow enzymes. Alcohol depletes us of enzymes too. It just leaks all our uh, micronutrients out of our body. <laughs> So, so enzymes act, act in immunity, they act in digestion, and they act in metabolism. So when, when we are depleted in these areas, what, what happens? We become immune deficient. We don't have enough enzymes in our white blood cells to gobble up and digest the pathogens and other debris in the bloodstream that they're designed to, they're, they're called uh, phagocytes or macrophages eating cells, but they're not only eating, they have to digest what they eat, and if they don't have the enzymes, they can't. So we're deficient there. And our immunity becomes deficient. Also, our digestion becomes impaired, because we rely on the, the enzymes in the food to help digest itself. But when we destroy all those, we have to provide those extra enzymes. And, and we're, we don't have enough to do that. 
And then metabolic enzymes, all the things that get built, all the things that get operated, and all the things that get b broken back apart when they're done, that's all done with enzymes. That's called met metabolism. Mm -hmm. Metabolic and catabolic, build up, maintain, and, and break down. So what happens when we don't have enough m metabolic enzymes? Your metabolism slows down. Low it's, energy, low and, mood. And, and you get fat because you're not burning as many calories. Okay, it's like if you had a factory and you got a production line, conveyor belt, and people are building stuff on that. And, and what happens is you have to slow down the conveyor belt so you're not going to get as much done. So it's, uh, the standard American diet is killing us in a number of ways. But we can avoid that by becoming educated, start eating more nutrient-dense foods, start eating more raw foods, which we're designed to eat, more green leafy vegetables. Um, I haven't eaten um, a four-legged animal except minor amounts for 50 years. I'm 77 years old. I play basketball today. Okay, I play the drums. I play drums in a band with Matt. <laughs> um, and I have an active lifestyle. I feel great. Um, and um, so anything else we need to talk about? No, that's beautiful. You <laughs> Very deep, too. People should probably listen to this a few times because I was learning a bunch of new things. Uh, following this episode, I'm going to be interviewing Chris Ingen, who is the founder of NutritionForRecovery.com. And so we're going to we're going to go deep into specific protocols. Now that you gave us the fundamentals of macronutrients, micronutrients, uh, the mega min I wanted to call one of them mega minerals. Macro. Macro, uh, micro, and trace minerals. I want a mega mineral. For me, magnesium is my mega mineral. We talked about enzymes, vitamins, minerals, omegas, standard American diet. So with her episode, we're going to go really into customized nutrition plans and also micronutrients like amino acids, enzymes, vitamins, and minerals, fish oils, and other omega-3s for addiction recovery. So, Dad, thanks so much. Where can people find you? Where can people get some of this, uh, these nutritional products we had? Where can people, where's the best place to learn more? And I know you've got some rad blog articles you've written lately. And we're going to put this on, uh, on your YouTube too, Self Heal. You can subscribe to the Self Heal School YouTube channel, which we're growing on there. But yeah, where can people find you? What's going on with classes, etc.? Well, we, we have our, my partner Jane and I have our own school here in San Diego. It's been operating since 1985. And I was only six. He was only six. He was a young lad. Um, and uh, we're here in San Diego. And it, you can find us at selfhealschool.com, S-E-L-F-H-E-A-L school.com. And we have our classes listed on there. As Matt said, I have a blog on there. Uh, with a bunch of articles I've written. Um, in in the ni early 90s, I had my own column in Living Better magazine called Herb Talk. So all those articles are up there, but I've written a bunch of articles since. And you have a nutrition course too, right? Like a kind of fundament nutrition fundamentals. What is that, a six-week class or something? There's two of them, actually. We have Holistic Nutrition 1 and Holistic Nutrition 2. And those will be offered after the first of the year. And... Um, yeah, it's nuts and bolts, some of the things I talked about today, but some of the things that I didn't cover, like um, like uh, antioxidants, which are super important. And that, that juice Matt was talking about with the Kayani totally. Sunrise, based on the wild Alaskan blueberry, blueberries have um, their antioxidant values about 4,000. Uh, the wild Alaskan blueberry has an antioxidant value of about 24,000. That's anthocyanins, right? Water-soluble phytochemical? Absolutely. And in that sunrise, it's married with a bunch of other uh, superfood concentrates. The antioxidant value of that is actually 118,000. So that's just off the charts. That's probably more antioxidants in a single serving than most people get in a week or two on the standard American diet. Maybe a month. <laughs> Yeah. Or a year. Yeah. And and I have one of those little packets every every day. It's just a one ounce pack of, you know, blueberry syrup, basically. But, uh, 
you, you can find out more about the, uh, their, uh, the company is called Kayani, K-Y-A-N-I. My uh, customer website is johnfinch.kayani.com, K-Y-A-N-I. And you can see about some of our superfood uh, concentrates and other products there. Hey everyone, Chris Scott here. If you like the information on today's episode regarding supplementation and empowerment strategies for addiction recovery, then please subscribe to the Elevation Recovery Podcast and leave us a rating and review on iTunes. And if you benefited directly from this information, I'm confident in saying that you'll love the information-packed online courses that Matt Finch and I have created. Matt Finch's Ultimate Opiate Detox 4.0 is a six-module, 30-activity course that contains video lessons, written lessons, PDF downloads, worksheets, audios, and much more. And it has everything you could possibly need to know to conquer opioid addiction in the easiest and most comfortable way possible. My own course, Total Alcohol Recovery 2.0, is the most cutting-edge resource for anyone who wants to transcend alcohol and build their best lives. To get these courses, to learn more, and to read testimonials, simply go to opiateaddictionsupport.com forward slash ultimate. Again, that's opiateaddictionsupport.com forward slash ultimate for Matt's course. Or for my course, go to fit-recovery.com forward slash course. Again, that's fit-recovery.com forward slash course. You can also go to elevationrecovery.com to see the show notes for this episode.